What up, players? It's Wobot's Tail Up in This Mud. Um, it's my little pre intro intro. Let me show you where we are at the end of this video. We've got the bale fire started and we've got the skeleton rib cage surrounding started. Uh, I haven't really started on the bale fire lights at the back, which uh, we're going to need to do in the next video. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty good. We um, do make some mistakes, as you'll see, uh, painting the, the, the bone up. Some of it gets splashed onto the actual stonework. So what I did was I just went back over it lightly with uh, some of my Cardin granite and Kemri brown. And <clears throat> it was, you know, a little mistake that I probably could have fixed if I had started with the skeleton with the bone frame first and um, saved the um, the stonework down here till till later. But I'm I'm still happy with the way it, it it's coming along. Um, up next we have to highlight up the bone and finish the bale fire as well as the lanterns back here but I'm pretty happy with it so far so hope you enjoy this tutorial stay tuned and um, uh, if you're painting along at home then it's really simple all you need for this one is snot green uh, Devlin mud or Agrax earth shade and then of stone or whatever you want to use to color the bone so uh, grab those paints and sit back relax and join us as we That was weird. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna base coat all of the bone with Deneb Stone. And not just because Deneb Stone is my favorite color, because Deneb Stone is like the best color, I think, to a paint bone. Especially as a base. Um, they have that new rack art flesh, but ah, I don't know. I just don't. I don't like it. You know what I'll do? We'll, we'll paint this side in Deneb stone, and then we'll paint the other in rack art flesh, so that we'll do a little comparison. <laughs> we'll leave it up to you, the people. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of sad because the only place that sells Deneb stone now is this one hobby shop. Um, so I bought like two pots of it and I feel like I probably should have bought more and I probably should be using a bigger brush so and one that I can use um, yeah hopefully my plan is to finish this mortis engine by the end of the weekend uh, we will see we shall see because I have I come up with great plans and um, they end up not coming to fruition so we shall see how, how awesome this plan is Oh, this is so annoying. Yeah, so an option is to paint this green bale fire, uh, kind of do an object source lighting kind of thing. I don't think I'm good enough yet to tackle that, so I'm just gonna paint it up 
um, as if the flames are radiating heat and not light. <laughs> or, you know, the ghostly green of the flames don't really affect anything else. It's just too hard, man. I tried object source lighting for those of you who've seen my Warhammer, my Dwarf Miners video, and oh man, it's so hard. I've been trying to practice it, but I feel like I just can't get it and all of the tutorials and videos and instructions that I followed online for doing it is just I can't get it so I'm just kind of put that on the back burner that's one of the skills I want to work on because um you see it a lot in golden demons and all that kind of stuff all the best painters know how to do it really well so um, that's something I know I have to work on if I want to ever count myself a great painter, but I feel like that's probably something I should have learned before tackling this giant monstrous piece, or it's just something that I'm going to have to leave, leave on the side for now, and then just come back and try and tackle it later on, you know what I mean? Do, 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 do. It's kind of hard. What sucks is that um, the wash that we're going to use, the washes that we're going to use, is going to really cover most of this. So technically, I don't have to paint all of this completely perfectly, but I don't know my standards. You know what I mean? The War Boss Tay standard. Uh, be careful when you're using your your base paints. I'm having a hard time apparently tonight just judging how how much water I'm using for thinning down my denim stone. It's hard. Yeah, so um, coming up in the works, I've got some more Empire stuff. Also got some more. Um, vampire count stuff and a whole bunch of stuff I'm actually painting up some um, I'm redoing my I'm gonna redo my I'm gonna do an orcs and goblins a savage orcs tutorial and uh, I want to use the new colors so I bought some of the new colors uh, some of the new greens I'm gonna try to work on them you know, I'll work on that over over the weekend as well. See if I can get a good color scheme that I like. I've got a bunch of savage orcs built up, just not painted, and I want to kind of keep my old school, you know, the um, the paint scheme that you saw from my old savage orcs video. I like it. I want to keep it nice and bright like that. Uh, yeah, I just have to get all the paints and do it right. The article on the painting the Mortis engine in the White Dwarf says that painting this frame part in bone is just one way that you could do it. Another option would be to paint it as glass, I think. Was it glass? No, metal. Paint it as metal or another option would be to paint it as I think they said like magic sucking obsidian to try and like tame the power of the of the artifact being held prisoner but I mean you know when you've got all of this on it it just seems like bone is the natural way that you want to go
Oh yeah, Warriors of Chaos too. I started filming a, uh, started filming my my or started painting my test model. Um, I'm trying to do that in the new colors as well, so that's why that's taking a little longer. I figure people who are collecting Chaos might not have all of the old colors. Um, so, for anyone interested in doing a Warriors of Chaos army, I'm going to be doing Chaos Warriors in all of the four different gods color schemes and then doing one in the Chaos Undivided colors of black. And black and it's like gold, gold trim, black and brass and silver. That one's awesome. That one's like one of my favorites. That one I really like. Okay, I'm finding that um, it's hard for me to figure out what is the frame and what is the stonework. So, on the inside, you're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. If there's anything that looks like you screwed up really, really bad, then you can just go back over it with some carrot and granite, it should be fine. This is so monstrous. When I first got in the hobby, uh, there was no vampire counts in Two Kings, there was just undead the undead range. And, oh my gosh, look at all my dry brushing and all the denim stone is splattering everywhere. I probably should have painted the bone first. Yeah, oh, my stone work. Okay, so lesson learned. Do the bone first and the stone work later. Bummer, dude. Oh, that's too bad, I really... Yeah, you know what, we can... That's an easily fixable, solvable problem. Don't get mad. Let's fix it again. It's not catchy at all, don't get mad. Get... Painting. Yeah, bummer, look at that. Oh. Looks so good. I have to not be so so messy when I'm splattering paint all over the place. Woo! Okay, I was I was so upset with what happened that I uh, forgot to switch over to Rackarth Flesh um, when all of my when I saw how all of my horribly rushed painting was. So, okay, here is a guy in skeleton guy that I painted in Deneb Stone and I'll put right under him Rackarth Flesh. It's not as thick, it's definitely not as thick as the foundation paints. So um, the tonage is slightly similar, color tone is slightly similar to old Deneb Stone but it, it doesn't um, apply as smoothly. See how it's kind of streaking down here? Uh, whereas Deneb Stone is a lot thicker so doesn't streak at all. If anything, it would clump um, because it's just too thick. But this Rackarth flesh is not really spreading very well, considering it's a base color. The new foundation paints. Um, it's kind of kind of disappointing, and it's more of a commando khaki, whereas uh, the Denim Stone is much closer to bleached bone. So, I mean, I think it'll be okay, but I just I don't like it as a base for my bone color. So I'm being pretty messy, um, and like I said in the last clip, if I could go back, I would start with the bone, 
um, and then work my way in. And probably one of the reasons why I didn't is because I like to, my, my, my painting approach is that I start with the innermost things and work my way out. Like with skin, when painting regular models, I start with the skin and then work my way out. But I guess with the bone, with this mortise engine, starting from the outside would really be easier. I guess. I mean, it probably also depends on who you are and what your preferences are, but for me personally, um, it feels like it's going to take a lot more time than had I painted it the opposite way. Yeah, so I've been on eBay a lot lately buying some, looking for good deals for Warhammer and stuff, and just, you know, trying to get my hands on the cheap stuff. Not many people selling, but a lot of, a lot of companies are selling um, a whole bunch of stuff really cheap, or not, I wouldn't say really cheap, but um, a lot cheaper than retail, uh, once you factor in shipping and all of that stuff though, how much you have to wait. Yeah, decide if it's worth it or not, but yeah, I saw some really great deals on different stuff. Um, Chaos Dwarfs pieces, some old vintage squats. A lot of people are also selling the limited edition stuff. Um, I guess they get it from the fo from, you know, special events like the Forge World uh, Cyber Mastiff and Enforcer characters figures and they just like sell it you know on eBay like five ten like they have like so many available they just keep putting it up and putting it up because they know that there are guys like me out there who just love to collect and paint stuff and will pay money for it So yeah, I'm probably, you know what, no matter where this is, I'm probably going to cut it because number one, I'm running out of stuff to talk to, number two, you can tell none of it's really, none of this is really going to help any of you who are actually trying to watch my video to learn how to paint it. I mean, the, the angles are just so weird and um, yeah, my camera is probably not focusing. I mean, I love my camera, but it doesn't have a autofocus feature for when the filming starts. So, um, probably gonna stop filming and just finish the rest of this thing and then come back. What was I saying about Vampire Count? So, oh yeah, back, back in the old days when it was just called Undead, um, they used to have the Nagash model for those of you who remember that big purple monstrosity. I remember thinking when this book came back out, like, oh, wouldn't it be so awesome if they brought him back? He's been in the fluff, but he's just kind of been like chilling in his, you know, secret volcano hideout. Just like gathering, regathering his strength and sitting on his undead throne and stuff, but man. It would be so awesome if they brought him back. See, it would be so awesome if they advanced the, the timeline, like, period. I mean, I love Carl Franz and stuff, but I remember playing Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, first edition, and the, the big, like, uh, culmination adventure was called Empire in Flames. And in that, in that one, like, near the middle, I don't even think it's, yeah, it's not like, was it near the ending? Somewhere near the middle to the ending of that adventure, you go to Altdorf, or maybe it was in the beginning even, you go to Altdorf and um, you watch the Emperor get assassinated. Does he get assassinated? I think he gets assassinated. He either gets assassinated or he dies, but yeah, everybody's talking about, oh my god, Karl Franz is dead. And I was like, they killed the Emperor? Holy moly! This is like back in the in the 90s, but I was just so like flabbergasted because it's like 
Dude, that's like the Emperor and you just killed him. I thought that was awesome. Like now all we get is, you know, each army book copying and pasting whatever was in the fluff section of the army book before and nothing gets, nothing gets added upon. Except in the army list where they come out with chocobo knights and all sorts of newfangled things like this monstrosity I'm painting. Yeah, nothing gets really advanced storyline wise. Just kind of crazy. Anyways, I guess you've seen enough of me painting this guy right now. So I'm gonna finish painting all the stone and we'll come back in the next part of the video. Okay, so here is our bone structure and uh, I painted everything, I believe just about everything, hopefully I didn't miss anything, in Deneb stone and next what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash the whole area <coughs> with a one-to-one -one mix of Devlin mud and water according to the White Dwarf. So the new Devlin mud is Agrax Earthshade. So, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to mix uh, every brush. I'm going to load with half with this and half with uh, water and of course it's going to be pretty approximate and we will wash it on. Um, this new uh, flip caps for these bottles are not feeling them. I think if you wanted, you could also do uh, Badab Black. It would be good to do as well. Or if you want an old, uh, a more like older, musty, shaded bone, you could go with Griffin Sepia, and that's it's kind of like my um, <clears throat> my Tomb Kings recipe for if I ever paint any Tomb Kings models, the bones for that would be more like shaded with the Griffin Sepia rather than a dark, darker like Devlin Mud or a dab black. So why, I wonder why the White Dwarf says to do a mix of one-to-one -one Devlin mud and water and it's probably because they don't want you to be completely um, covering the surface with this dark brown wash. Uh, but they want almost, almost like a halfway between a wash and a glaze. That's the only reason I can think of it. For you experienced painters out there who would know why they would want you to thin down a wash. Um, if you have any thoughts, please feel free to leave me a comment. I realize that um, once I get all this painted up, I'm gonna need um, to paint up the front bone cage Part as well. I don't know if I'm going to do that though. I might just leave it open so that you can see the artifact. Yeah, see, so you almost get like a like a really watery, diluted version of Agrax Earth Shade or Devlin Mud when you do it like this. 
Or I wonder if Devlin Mud was just too dark and Agrax Earthshade is the Devlin Mud plus water um, color. Hmm. In which case, <clears throat> I'm messing it all up right now. Because I'm following an outdated painting guide. You know what I mean? I say that a lot, I guess I'm saying that. Um, let's try and just paint it on. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to assume that Agrax Earthshade is Devlin Mud plus Water. And you know what happens when you assume, but hopefully I won't be making an ass out of myself. I'm just going to paint it up and assume that this is what Games Workshop meant. This is what the, the heavy metal guys meant. So some people have making, been making comments about how they think that I should paint for heavy metal or enter a golden demon competition or Adepticon's Crystal Rush or you know, stuff like that. And I just gotta say that is so awesome and so cool to hear from my viewers and subscribers. So thank you if you've thought that or if you've mentioned it or said it. Um, that is so cool to hear, but I just, I know, I know I'm nowhere near like golden demon quality. Most of the stuff that I try to make is just, you know, I try to make videos showing a good standard, what I what I consider to be a pretty, you know, pretty good standard for uh, that anybody can achieve, not just you know golden demon winners or people who artists who know their color theory and the color wheel and all of that. Um, that's my goal. I, I really enjoy painting. I enjoy just how relaxing and rewarding it is when you spend, you know, hours and hours on a model. Or not even hours and hours, when you can find a fast, effective way of painting, batch painting a whole bunch of, of core or line, regular troop choices, guys, and make it look like, you know, really good on the tabletop. And, uh, because really in the end, like, the main reason why we spend so long trying to perfect our paint technique is so that people will notice and think that, you know, we're good artists and stuff. Like, that is, that is the core, right, of why we do, why we do what we do. Why some of you, my loyal subscribers, watch and sit through and bear the hours and hours of these painting videos that a lot of people would just say is a waste of time. Um, so thank you for all of you who watch my videos. Again, I mean, I say thank you all the time, but like, I'm just so appreciative of people who really sit down and watch and, or just even like paint while, while they're watching or just have, have me playing in the background right now while you're doing your own thing. Like that is just so, so awesome. And I know I do it with, you know, the people that I enjoy watching. Okay, so we're right at the front now. So I'm going to just stop filming. And um, I will finish painting the front uh, when the back is dried. And I'm able to hold it. And then I can at least paint the book. This poor guy. And uh, we'll come back when all of this is dry. This Agrax Earthshade is dry and we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, well, while we're waiting for the um, wash to continue drying, we're gonna paint the bale fire. So Snot Green is first. And Snot Green, always been one of my favorite colors, uh, one of my favorite greens, actually. Um, I've always thought when painting my orcs and goblins that um, goblin green was just too bright whereas dark angels green was just too dark and when the new 
or when the foundation paints had just come out and they were the new things that everybody was all hyped out about. A lot of people were doing uh, Gretchen Green and Work Hide Green. But I'd always thought they were just a little bit too, too dull. It's not green, you'll see is very, it's really vibrant and bright. Uh, or full bodied, I don't want to say bright. Because goblin green, scorpion green, those greens are really bright. Where it's not green, it's just really full bodied and it's deep, it's rich. And uh, it's my favorite paint when I'm painting orcs and goblins. It's my favorite, I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it. these with the new 8th edition mindset of bigger is better it's just so much more stuff you have to paint now I keep thinking back to when the arachnarok came out for the orcs and goblins and everybody thought that giant spider is amazing because it was new, there was no real giant, huge Jangus monster like that before. Everybody wanted one, or two, or three. And then Tomb Kings came out a little bit after that, and they had, you know, their sphinxes, and everybody was like, these things are unstoppable! Every Tomb King army needs one! OMG! LOLRZ! And then every, you know, every army after, like, the Ogre Kingdoms had their woolly mammoths, and the Empire now has their, their griffin and their giant, giant machines of death. It's like, bigger is better, and it's gonna keep getting bigger, no matter what you think. GW has to sell those army kits. We don't care if you want to run a horde army. They won't be effective if you don't take this. Or we don't care what your play style is. You need to get one of these. And a couple of those. Which, you know, is pretty good business sense. You make the rules reflective of whatever you're trying to sell so that people need to buy them. It's just, uh, it's just too bad. What am I complaining about? I don't even play. <laughs> I used to play a lot more. Um, I used to really only play Orcs and Goblins though, because by the time I started collecting and painting other things, like vampire counts, um, I kind of stopped going out to my game club. I've just been really busy with my new job, and um, yeah, you know. Excuse me. 
Have you seen the Death Core of Krieg painting tutorial? Hey, what are you doing in my video? Get the hell out of my video! Excuse me. I was looking for the Death Core. Of I don't care what you were looking for. Don't get out. Sheesh. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. So I think I'm gonna cut it after this video because we're, you know, we we put the base coat and the wash for the uh, for the bone, put the base coat for the bale fire, and um, it's like we'll be doing this video in couple segments, not just this one. I don't want to overload people's computers by doing huge, giant memory taking um, videos. So if you want to see how I get the rest of this all painted up, stay tuned. And I think we're just about done with the Balefire base coat. Thank you all for watching, and um, don't forget to leave me a comment if you haven't already, and we will continue on in the next video. See, let's take a look at how that looks from the front. It's not bad, I think once we add, you know, some more little things like washes and highlights to the bale fire. That green that's not green is really sickly and ghostly and looks really cool. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.